I had a client email me today with a small issue. Basically, they were traveling and they have a pedal-based power meter, but for whatever reason, they had their pedals off of their bike when they traveled. So now they are back home for the next few weeks and they don't have their power meter. So I just wanted to check in with a few thoughts that I had about that. Like a lot of cyclists, I really love having a power meter on my bike. I love having it for my clients. It's really easy to tell, you know, how training is going, how hard efforts are going, whether or not I'm setting new peak power or matching old peak power, or if I'm, you know, far from it. Um, same with my clients, especially for, you know, clients that are um, not racing and they don't have that kind of feedback uh, racing against competitors. It's really great if they can go out and do, you know, fitness testing efforts, or they can go out and hit classic workouts that are their favorite workouts and see if they're able to, you know, meet or beat whatever their previous performances have been on those workouts. But obviously not everyone can afford a power meter. Not everyone um, has it available on all of their bikes if they have a mountain bike and a gravel bike and a road bike or whatever it is. And in this case, sometimes, you know, your power meter craps out on you or your battery dies part way through a ride or you're traveling and you're renting a bike or you're traveling and you forgot your own power meter. Um, with a pedal-based power meter system that obviously could happen. Um, anyway, so I really appreciate having power, but it is not essential for doing quality training. And I think if anything, for this client, uh, we had an email back and forth exchange. And as much as I love having power on my bike and on my client's bikes, uh, basically I saw this as, you know, unfortunate but really not a big deal and it could be a fun little learning opportunity um some of what i wrote back to him was that uh personally i wouldn't worry about it i know it's when we get used to having that data it's really nice to have it and you feel like you're missing something when you don't have it for a while uh, but it's fine you don't need power to do good training especially if you have a good feel for what you need to be doing on your bike from riding with power for a while um, basically, if you have that baseline of doing training for an extended period of time and you know what your steady endurance pace feels like, you know what your threshold intervals feel like, you know how to pace it so you're not way overshooting early on in an effort because you've seen you know, how your perceived effort and your heart rate and your power all correlate to each other, you can do a good job training by feel if you have been paying attention to how you feel throughout all of your training when you've had a power meter. So ha not having power meter for a short time or even an extended period of time is gonna be totally fine. We definitely like having power and we definitely want to have it long-term, but missing a few weeks is not a big deal. Yeah, we can use this as a small learning opportunity where we can focus more on sensations without external feedback in the form of power. We can use perceived effort, heart rate, and time on climbs to gauge what's happening. And I really think that this is, you know, um, not a bad insight to draw attention to in general, because nowadays I feel like a lot of people are really fixated on power and they stop paying attention to how they're feeling. They don't pay as much attention to heart rate. Heart rate is very valuable, but a lot of people don't even ride with a heart rate monitor because they have a power meter and they only pay attention to power. And, you know, strictly speaking, neither of those things matter. I mean, over the years, I've done a lot of um, playing on Strava, going after KOMs, and it's always fun to see that I achieve, you know, a peak power number or I match some old peak power number that I have. Um, there's always some margin of error for measurement, and and I know that, and I've had different power meters that read a little bit higher or lower than other ones, but you always get used to whatever your power meter is saying, and so if you have a power meter that reads a few percent higher or lower than whatever other old power meter you had. Like, it's not a big deal, you just get used to it. But who cares if I do a certain amount of power on a given climb? I only care in that instance that I get the KOM or that I set a PR on the climb. So, you know, for example, a few years ago, I think, you know, one of my favorite all-time rides ever was midway through the 2015 racing season. And I was racing like, pretty actively, but it was, it was it was all casual, it was for fun. I wasn't taking it like way seriously like I was when I was racing professionally. And I was having a good season. I went into it um, having had an injury the previous year. And af as part of rehab for that injury, I had done a lot more strength training. So I started 2015 a few pounds heavier than I would normally would. I was like maybe 170 or so. And by June and July, I'd gotten down to like the low 160s, like 162 or 163, which is kind of, I don't know, that's like 
normal for me uh, if I'm racing and I'm trying to be a little bit light. And early in the year, I had had good fitness, I had had good power, and on one of my favorite climbs nearby, Claremont, uh, right behind the Claremont Hotel in Berkeley, I had done some training efforts where I had done about 500 watts based on my power meter at the time um, up that climb, but I was a few pounds heavier, so it wasn't like a really fast time for me at least. It was like one of my better times, but it wasn't great. But throughout the season, I'd, I'd been able to lose several pounds, and I went out again in, I guess it was probably July, because it was right before um, Cascade where I crashed and had a, another injury. I was able to go out and really go full gas and recapture um, that climb and get the KOM on it. I'd had it years before, but a few people had beaten me on it. And I was like, I was stoked. And it was fun to see that I was able to do, according to my power meter, 500 watts for all like 930, 940, whatever it was. Um, and I felt really good. I kept going. I just like cruised around for another hour to another climb, Wildcat, and went for it on that one and did just a little bit shy of 500 again um, to get the KOM on that, which was just saving a few seconds off of my previous time, which also was the KOM at the time, I think. And, you know, at the time, it was nice to have power because I could look at it and when I was doing my effort, I could see if I was like pacing it well and see if my effort to try to set a fast time on those climbs was going to be successful because like, you know, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes left, if I can see what my average power is and I'm used to seeing um, certain numbers, like I, I can use that information to know how I'm doing and know if I'm pacing it well. But do I really care at the end of the day if my power meter says that I did 450 or 480 or 500? I don't really care at all. If my power meter is 10% off, I really don't care. What I care about is that I go fast up the climb and the power meter is always going to be measuring relatively self-similar if it's calibrated and nothing has changed substantially with it. So whatever it is that it's telling me, um, hopefully people can manufacture good products and they're relatively accurate. But what I care about is getting up the hill fast. And if I didn't have power, I would still just care about going up the hill fast. Having power helps me to pace it a little bit better. But also having power for years and training and like knowing how to pace things um, from paying attention to power and heart rate and perceived effort. If I don't have a power meter one day, um, it doesn't really throw me off my game. And I can still focus on doing what I know feels right and maybe paying attention to my heart rate to get some kind of objective feedback so that I'm not only paying attention to my perceived effort. But ultimately, you know, if you're feeling good and you pace it well, if you get up the hill fast or if you win the race, like that's what matters. And likewise, if you're doing workouts, like you can pay attention to how you're feling. And if anything, that kind of self-awareness and proprioceptive um, acuity is, is really pretty key. And I would say that that's more useful than having a power meter. And likewise, if you're going out and you're doing training efforts, like if you're doing, you know, threshold intervals or VO to max intervals, um, whatever efforts you're doing, it's great if you have a power meter, but you can also just use Strava and use times on your favorite climbing segments. And that's really gonna be very useful. If you do five minute repeats on the same stretch of road, you know that you're being consistent with your power. If you do five minutes and then 520 and then 530 and then you know 540 on the same stretch of road when you're doing hill repeats, for example, you know that your power is dropping off and that you went out too hot on that workout. Um, and if you had a power meter, it would just confirm that. But the fact that you were going up and down the same stretch of road and your times were either consistent or they weren't, that's going to be the feedback that you need uh, to know that you're like executing the type of training that you're trying to execute as well as you can. I think that's it for this video. I mean, like I said, I love power. It's great. It's a great tool for getting more feedback than you can get just from feeling your way through training and looking at your, your clock. Um, but it's not necessarily the only way to train well, and you should always be very keenly aware of how you feel, and you should be able to execute good training with or without a power meter. So that's it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.